Lesson 1.8 relate multiplication to division. We're going to talk about the distributive property, and I hope you saw the previous videos, which are linked in the description. In fourth grade video 4.11, we learned that an inverse operation is an opposite operation. Subtraction is the inverse of addition. Addition is the inverse of subtraction. We have 5 plus 3 is equal to 8. We can do the opposite. 8 minus 3 is equal to 5. Multiplication is the inverse of division. Division is the inverse of multiplication. We can use the relationship between multiplication and division to solve division problems using the same numbers. We have the factor 6 times the factor 9. It equals the product 54. If 54 is the dividend and 9 is the divisor, 6 will be the quotient. We're using the same numbers. If two operations are inverse operations, one operation will undo the other. Here we have 72 divided by 8. We can think 8 times some number is equal to 72. We should have the multiplication facts to 12 memorized by now you would know that that's 9. 8 times 9 is equal to 72, so 72 divided by 8 would be 9. We can use multiplication to solve for division. Emma and three friends want to equally share 24 jelly beans. How many jelly beans will each person get? And we think, well, Emma and three friends means there are four people. We need to divide 24 jelly beans by four people. And we think of the basic fact, four times some number is equal to 24. We can make an array. We can make 24 squares that are in four rows. One, two, three, four. Four times some number is equal to 24. We think four times six is equal to 24. Our array shows 24 into four equal rows, each person will get six jelly beans. We use multiplication to help us solve for division. We can use the distributive property and an area model to solve division problems. Remember, the distributive property states that multiplying the sum of add-ins is the same as multiplying by each separate add-in than adding their products. We have 6 times 9, and that's equal to 6 times a 5 plus 4. The 9 was broken into a 5 plus 4. We distribute the 6 into the parentheses, just like a mother bird feeding her babies in a parentheses nest. We have 6 times 5 plus, because there's a plus sign there, 6 times 4. 6 times 5 is equal to 30. 6 times 4 is equal to 24. We add them together. It's equal to 54. This equation says 116 divided by 4. We need to find the quotient. We think 4 times some number is equal to 116. We can draw an array. The entire thing would be 116, and we break it apart into a multiple of 10 and whatever is left over. We can use 100, that's a multiple of 10, and we can use what's left over, the 16. And we think 4 times some number is equal to 100, and 4 times some number is equal to 16. We would add those together. We use the distributive property to break apart a large area into smaller areas of partial products we know. Well, 4 times 25 is equal to 100. That's like 4 quarters and a dollar. And 4 times 4 is equal to 16. We find the sum of the unknown factors of the smaller areas, the 25 plus the 4. That's equal to 29. That means 4 times 29 is equal to 116. And 116 divided by 4 is equal to 29. It's very important that this partial product 100 and this partial product 16 will equal the 116, okay? Make sure that it will have that as a sum. So when we do this part, 
It makes sense. Using this method, we can divide greater numbers using mental math. We have 91 divided by 7. We need to find the quotient. We think 7 times some number is equal to 91. So for our array, 7 times some number is going to equal 91. We use the distributive property to break apart the large area, the 91, into smaller areas of partial products that we already know. We use a multiple of 10, so it's easier. We have a 7 here, so we think 7 times 10. So we know that is going to be a 10. And to equal 91, we need 21 more. So we have a 70 plus a 21. And we think 7 times some number is 21. And the sum of the unknown factors will be the quotient. So we have a 10 and a 3. That's 13. 91 divided by 7 is equal to 13. Make sure the sum of the partial products, the 70 and the 21, these partial products, is equal to the dividend 91. Okay? You want to make sure that the same number here is the same as the dividend. Okay? It's telling us to use multiplication and the distributive property to find the quotient. We have 136 divided by 8. So we break apart 136, so one addend is a multiple of 10. And because we've got an 8 here for our divisor, we think 8 times 10, well that's 80. And 136 minus 80 would be 56, so this part would have to equal 56 for 80 plus 56 to equal 136. We think of the basic fact, 8 times 7 is equal to 56. We add 10 plus 7, we know 17 is our quotient. 136 divided by 8 is equal to 17. We used a multiple of 10, and since our divisor was an 8, we used 8 times 10, and we figured out what would be left over from the 136, and we figured 8 times some number is equal to that leftover amount. We're going to try it again. Here we have 162 divided by 6. We need to find the quotient. We need to break apart 162 so one add end is a multiple of 10. Now remember, multiples of 10 can be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Because our divisor is a 6, we try 6 times 10. Well, that's equal to 60. If we subtracted that from 162, we'd have 102. That's kind of big for the other add end, for the other partial product. Let's try 6 times 20 for our multiple of 10. That's equal to 120. Then we would find the difference between 120 and 162. So that could work. We try 6 times 30 as our multiple of 10, the 30. That would be 180. That's too big for 162. We went past it. So it looks like we're going to use 6 times 20. When we take 120 from the 162, that's going to leave 42. That means we've got 120 plus 42 is equal to 162. We know 6 times 20 is 120, and we think 6 times some number is 42, that would be 6 times 7. We add the 20 and the 7, we know our quotient is 27. So you can try other multiples of 10 to see which one fits the best. It might be a 20 or a 30 or a 40 or a 50 or a 60. It could be any multiple of 10, but be careful. Make sure the sum of the partial products is equal to the dividend. We want 120 plus 42 to equal 162, that dividend. We need to find the quotient, then compare and write the symbols less than, greater than, or equal to in the circle. We have 212 divided by 4. We need to compare it to 162 divided by 3. So we need to solve each side first to find out what they're equal to 
to be able to write which symbol is the correct one. And we think we have 212, we can break that into a 200 and a 12 to equal 212. And we think 4 times some number is equal to 200, that would be 4 times 50. And 4 times some number is equal to 12, that would be 4 times 3. And we add the 50 plus the 3, that's equal to 53. So we know this side is equal to 53. We have 162, we think of a multiple of 10, we can use 150 because 3 times 50 is equal to 150. We're going to have 12 left over to make a 162 and we think 3 times 4 is 12. We add the 50 plus the 4 and that's equal to 54. So now because we have the quotients we're comparing 53 to 54 and that's easy. We know this one's less. 212 divided by 4 is less than 162 divided by 3. Now another way we could have solved this is breaking it apart into a 200 and a 12 and thinking with mental math 200 divided by 4 would be a 50. We have 12 more. 12 divided by 4 is a 3 and then adding the 50 and the 3. And we could have thought well we can use 150 and divide it by 3 which is 50 and 12 divided by 3, which is a 4, and then adding the 50 and the 4. So if you were using mental math, you could just think in your head, well, let's make this a nice round number of 200. 4 goes into 200 50 times, and we still have 12. 4 goes into 12 3 times. Here we have a word problem, and it involves some information, some data, in a table. So let's look at the table real quick first. It says cookies, it's got their size, 2 inch, 3 inch, 4 inch, and it's got the number in a batch. So there's 24 in a 2 inch batch, 18 in a 3 inch batch, and 12 in a 4 inch batch. And the word problem says Mrs. Kim has two cookie boxes. She bakes a batch of 4 inch cookies and a batch of 3 inch cookies. She puts an equal number of cookies into the two boxes. How many cookies does she put in each box? So, first, in the red, it says we need to ignore unnecessary information. Do you see some information in this problem that we don't need? Do we need to know there are 24 in a batch of 2-inch? No, it doesn't even mention the 2-inch cookie, so we don't even need that information. And we think she baked one batch of 4-inch cookies, so that's 12 cookies, she baked one batch of 3-inch cookies, that would be 18 cookies, and 12 plus 18 is equal to 30 cookies, baked in all, with an equal number put into two boxes. That means we're going to do 30 cookies divided by two boxes. That means she put 15 cookies in each box. So there are several steps to this problem. We needed to see how many were in a batch. We needed to add those numbers together, and then we needed to divide them by the two boxes. Which equation uses the distributive property correctly to solve 258 divided by 6? So let's look at each of the problems and Think of an inverse operation that would help us so that we could use the distributive property. We have 258 divided by 6. What multiplication equation could we write that would be related to that division equation? We can think 6 times some number is equal to 258. Would A fit? We have 3 times 40 plus 3 times 3 is equal to 258. If we're not sure, we can try solving inside of each parentheses to see. We know we can use the basic facts 3 times 4, and using the pattern of zeros, we can just do 12 with a 0. That would be 120 for here. And 3 times 3 is 9. Is 120? plus 9 equal to 258? No. 
So we know it's not A. Let's look at B. We have 6 times 40 plus 6 times 3 is equal to 258. Here we have 6 plus 40 times 6 times 3 is equal to 258. Here we have 3 plus 40 times 3 plus 3 is equal to 258. We could solve within the parentheses for each one, but if you know how we did the distributive property to help us solve division, you know that we're going to have a 6 distributed into parentheses. So it's not going to be a 3. So it's not D. Inside the parentheses, are we supposed to multiply or are we supposed to add? In between them, are we supposed to add or are we supposed to multiply? Do you remember? Well, if you said B, you're right. 6 times 40 would be 240. 6 times 3 would be 18. And we would add 240 plus 18. That is equal to 258. If we did this, we would have 46 times 9. 46 times 9 is 414. It's not 258. So we know B is the correct answer. So as I always say, there can be more than one way to solve a problem, but one way is usually easier than another. There are many ways to solve division problems and using the distributive property is one of them. For our next lesson, 1.9, we're going to do some word problem solving with multiplication and division. We're going to talk about a strategy called solve a simpler problem. I'm really proud of you for watching math videos, and I hope you really enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.